things that eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and mind has not conceived, all that God has prepared for those who love him. God wants to do something so big and so awesome, the only explanation, it's a God thing. Families who, who come to Westside, they're going to experience a place that is real, that is welcoming, that is authentic, that is alive. All In is a church-wide faith adventure where we're asking God to give us a thousand new families. Think about that. The impact that, that we have is, is far beyond the walls here at Westside, and so um, I want us to, to embrace that. I want us to really engage in the community and the life of the church here. The impact that we have is eternal. We were tight-knit boys, brothers and more than men. Think about thousands of kids. Me, I hear all the time that children are the future of the church. No, they are the church of today. And by doing this, we not only help their lives to improve, we introduce them to a Savior, Jesus Christ, who gives them hope and a reason to live. And I was there when you grew. always been a people willing to go all in to reach the church that is not here yet. I think at its core, all in is a spiritual journey. It's a challenge. And uh, every now and then we all need a stretch. We all need a challenge. I know I do. You know, Westside has the opportunity to really transform the whole city through All In as we reach a thousand new families and have them discover God's mission for their lives and then engage in that mission. For us as a church, for every person to get all in uh, means that we want to see a thousand new families uh, coming to the West Side Fold to see what Jesus can do through their lives. And I, I got to tell you, their last names are not all going to be Smith. We estimate that around 27,000 people are impacted through the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ through West Side Family Church. And that is awesome. You know, we feel such a great, wonderful honor and responsibility to continue that heritage to make room for more families that will come behind us. We're seeing life change that's leading to community change that can lead to world change. That's what gets me up in the morning. That is why we're talking about going all in. So I think it's going to be a spiritual journey that we'll all look back on in five years and say, wow, you know, look at what God just did. We're inviting you to join us to go all in for family, for impact, and for our future. All in is a God thing. Yeah. Hey, thanks for being here today. Whether you're at Lenexa, at Speedway, at Lansing, or online, we are thrilled that you're here. Grab your notes. Going to jump straight into talking a bit about all 
end. This is our week number five of this series where we're wanting to go all in to partner with Jesus to see him do amazing things at Westside. All in is our two-year faith journey where we're going to keep doing everything Westside is already about, but also take on the effort of reaching a thousand new unchurched families. It's based around one verse of scripture out of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to ask you to read it out loud with me. It's going to be on the screen. It's in your notes as well. Let's use that. We're trying to be awake and rowdy voice. You ready? Here's what God says. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Write these three words in the side margin. It's the summary of that verse. God has more. God has more. Whatever you've seen him do, he's got more. Whatever you've heard of him doing, he's got more. Whatever you've imagined him doing, he has more. And the big idea for this entire series is simply this. Jesus is an all-in God, write that down, who seeks all-in followers, that's us, to have an all-in impact in a way lost world. Jesus, who's an all-in God, seeking all-in followers to partner with him for an all-in impact in a way lost world world. You've seen the prayer walls that are out in the commons here at Lenexa, out in the lobby at Speedway. The men at Lansing have added names to them. We actually have two of them in the room here at Lenexa today. We're writing out the names of the thousand families we're praying for. And when we have finished filling in these last walls, we'll actually have 1,200 names that we're praying for specifically. I've had the advantage of hearing some incredible stories about these names. One guy at Lansing in the prison wrote the name of his guard. One Speedway Westsider wrote the name of his boss and sent me a note saying he really needs Jesus. <laughs> at Lenexa, we've seen some amazing things. One, one lady who came in and wrote my husband and then his first name. And her eight or nine-year-old son behind her wrote my daddy and his first name as well. One lady that was here last week, I believe a first-time guest, who was so moved that she uh, went to the Next Steps area and talked with someone and, and literally said, can I put a name on the wall even though I'm a first-time guest? And, and the leader said, absolutely. She wrote her own name on the wall. Is somebody who needs to come to know Jesus. This initiative is about prayer. It's about going all in. And later today, you're going to have an opportunity to make that all-in commitment. We want you to hear this story from somebody who's been on an amazing all-in journey. Check this out. struggled a lot in our first year especially. We did some counseling oh, about a year into a year and a half into our marriage. We did some counseling at, at Westside and um, our pre-marriage counseling um, was not really, not, not really anything. anything. Yeah. So it was kind of a almost a pre-marriage counseling after marriage yeah. kind of thing and he kind of took us through what he normally does with a pre-married couple. So it, it was a lot. It helped us kind of learn a little bit more about ourselves plus our spouse that we never really discussed prior to getting married and it our, really our first opened. two years we were on completely different yeah. wavelengths we weren't even a lot of things. yeah I mean, you know talking in counseling with pastor dear Wester, it was um i i felt like something that as in our marriage we should strive to be debt free as well also and a big part was that it was such a conflict for us we would have kind of knockout drag outs on when you know just talking about finances and we'd have, you know, it would be kind of the root of a lot of our problems and our arguments and things and it was not fun. So we just were like, you know, if, and it really, once we kind of didn't have money to fight about, we didn't really have a whole lot to fight about. So it really it's true. kind of helped us in that. That's so that true. was kind of a big part of it was like, we could tell it was part of the problem of us just not communicating well. And, but it, and it did take some sacrifice and definitely there was times that I thought that it, the whole thing was stupid and that I just, it took me a while to be on board, it really did. Living paycheck to paycheck to then like giving ourselves um, boundaries in our spending and, and limiting ourselves, I mean, you know, we would 
it's it's the last week of the month and you know we're eating mac and cheese and and starving to make it through the end of the week. Another big thing too is we both really wanted to start giving and tithing and we hadn't really done that much in the first our first couple of years just because we didn't feel like we had the money to do it and that should be our number one priority to do yeah. first before we do anything else and so that really got us giving back and tithing and putting you know that first and that really like I mean it kind of bloomed from there and you know as things got paid off we added more to that and it could grow and it was and it was exciting for us because we finally felt like we were gonna do that and we could see the root you know like the blessings that came back from that and it was it was cool and you just kind of got more excited to get more so that we could give more and you know it's, it's hard to, when you, you build a budget and you see man you know we're called to give this much money <laughs> every every month <laughs> okay. every paycheck I have to give that much away like I, I could pay my debt down so much faster if we just you know delayed that but you know prayerful consideration and just recognizing that hey this is a this is a command from God and you know if we're gonna follow him follow him in this these all these other things like you, you we don't get to pick and choose what we what we want to follow um, it has to be all of it and you know we, we started we started giving, and every time we'd pay down a debt, we'd increase the amount that we were giving. To where by the end, when we when we were finally, um, you know, we were giving 10% and more. Last year, 2011's Impact Drive, um, we you know we thought about it, we prayed a lot about it, we looked at our budget. So, you know, here's where we feel like we can we can cut and we can give above and beyond, and uh, we dedicated our amount, we signed, and, and dropped in the offering. And the next day, Aaron got a pay raise that was equivalent to what we had promised to give over the next year. It's like that is the goodness of God. Like yeah. he responds when we answer his call. It was awesome. Yeah. Those things seem to happen a lot too. <laughs> yeah. When you really commit, it suddenly it all starts to fall together. Makes sense. How about a hand for Tim and Aaron, huh? We've been reading through the book of Acts these last few weeks, looking for all-in moments from all-in followers, all-in commitments like you just saw from Tim and Aaron V. Think about this. This church went viral. 120 people strong in Acts chapter 1, 3,000 in Acts chapter 2, 6,000 just four months later in Acts chapter 6. They were quickly a mega church, but check this out. Much like Westside, they did not feel like a mega church because they met in big groups for worship, but in small groups for relationship and for accountability. Listen to the passage, grab your notes, let's go back and study together today what it means to be an all-in follower. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them all, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had, don't miss this, shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared their money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple court each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. This was a viral church, a church that was spreading like wildfire, a church that was impacting its community. What keeps most 21st century churches from becoming that kind of viral? I want you to write this in. The biggest challenge I see in the 21st century church is fans, write that down, who call themselves Christians, but they actually are not interested in following Christ. There's a difference in a fan and a follower. That's the idea. Think about it. A fan is defined as an enthusiastic admirer. Now, we all get what it means to be a fan. 
I mean, we are sports crazy in Kansas. We get into it. And if you follow any kind of Kansas basketball, your team did not do well yesterday. But the reality is we're fans. We wear the logo. We sit in the stands. We cheer. We go crazy. Occasionally when they have a bad season, we don't go quite so crazy. But we never get on the courts. We never get on the field. We are enthusiastic fans. Unfortunately, we use that same mindset when it comes to Jesus. Go, Jesus. Yeah, I like what you said there. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, what's happening over there at the church? That's, that's awesome. Yeah, go Jesus. Go church. And we sit in the stands and never get into the game of life. Never get on the battlefield. He doesn't call us to be fans. He calls us to be followers. Now, it's really cool to me that Westside is in the process of becoming a church of followers. We're fans, but we're more than that. We want to follow What's the characteristics of an all-in Christ follower? Thank you for asking. They're answered in the passage we just read. I want to give you five characteristics. You can kind of see how you're doing on being an all-in Christ follower. You ready? First characteristic, committed to Scripture. Committed to Scripture. The first thing it says in this passage is that they're devoted to the apostles' teaching. That means to hearing the word taught. That means to studying the word on your own, reading this thing. I mean, is this something you turn to just when you're in trouble? Or is this something you feed yourself in every day? All in Christ followers are committed to scripture. Secondly, they're committed to fellowship. They're committed to fellowship. The passage says they met in a big group for worship and in houses for fellowship to build relationships. This is the place where you really get all in when you find a group of people that you're working together to follow Christ, holding each other accountable. That's the idea. Christ followers are all in for scripture. They're all in for fellowship. Thirdly, they're all in for prayer. All in for prayer. If you were not here last week, go online. That lesson was important in the journey of faith for Westside. We talked about finding your chair in front of the throne of God. And a cool thing has happened all week. You guys have been emailing me pictures of your chairs. Wow, it's been cool and it has been diverse. It's been really, really fun. But the idea that we want to talk with God, not just when we're in trouble, but all day long, every day, and not just talk, but listen. An all-in follower realizes that the relationship with Jesus is conversational. It's two ways. All-in followers, you're doing okay so far? Committed to scripture, to fellowship, to prayer, to worship. Write that one down. This passage says they met every day for worship in the temple court. Every day. Now, we think we're doing good if we make it twice a month. Guys, here's a simple way to know if you're an all-in worshiper. If you're in town, you're here. And if you're out of town, you're on the internet. It is so cool that you can drive down the road, catch our service on your phone. Do not watch while you're driving. <laughs> Listen while you're driving. Hand the phone to somebody else. But it's an amazing thing that we can be committed to scripture, to fellowship, to prayer, to worship. Every Christ follower I've ever known who understands all in goes, yeah, all four of those matter. It's the fifth one where the rubber hits the road and we throw on the brakes. We're committed to generosity. The biggest subject in this passage describing this early church is not scripture and it's not worship and it's not fellowship and it's not even prayer. It's generosity. It says they shared everything they owned. They sold houses. They sold possessions. They shared their money with anyone in need. Wow. Now, many of you are going, hey, Dan, love those first four, but you, you, know, that, that, you could have left out that last one. I didn't add it. There's a reason Jesus talks about money more than any other subject. Is it because he needs your money? Nope, he's not broke. It's because he knows that until he has your wallet, he doesn't have your heart. He knows us. 
He knows that the hardest thing for us to surrender is our finances. But if we're going to go all in, we surrender that too. I can't say all in, Lord. Like I'm in the swimming pool for you, swimming along with my wallet hold out, held out of the water. You know, I'm in, Lord. I'm in. No, if I'm heart deep, I'm wallet deep. If he's got me, he's got all of me. I have heard some amazing stories just like these in the book of Acts. You've been reading through Acts? You hear some amazing things about how they sold stuff and did stuff. One family here at Westside, retired family. The wife is on our planning advisory team. She knew this was coming. So in January, she starts talking to her husband and says, Honey, we want to do something significant for All In. We're on a retirement income. What can we do? Let's just pray and say, Jesus, give us enough to live on, but give us enough to be generous. They got a call from a local realtor who said, I have someone who wants to buy your house. They said, that's weird. Our house is not for sale. The realtor said, it will be when you hear what they're willing to pay. All of a sudden, they listed their house. They sold it and downsized and made a significant amount of money and gave a huge piece of it for all in. Retirement, folks. Guys, when we pray the prayer, Lord, give me enough to live on and enough to be generous with. Here's my stretch. Here's what I'm committing to. He shows up. He shows up. I believe this last thing, write it in. Jesus watches over his fans. He does. If you're a fan of Jesus today, that's cool. He watches over you. We learned in our shipwrecked series that he watches over all his sheep. But he partners, he partners with his followers. He says, join me in changing the spiritual landscape of your world. All in is about partnering with Jesus to reach a thousand new unchurched families. Our kids are going to join us in a few minutes. Our high schoolers have already done so much to go all in. One high school kid putting out they're putting their card in early that said, I'm giving five dollars of my own money every week. I was so moved by that. Why is this a big deal? Because there is no life change without somebody going all in. And when we go all in, there's always life change. Check out this story from one of our high school students here at Westside. I've always been the girl to, to follow the rules and try to do the right thing. Um, but it was mostly because I cared of what people thought of me, and I had this this reputation to uphold. Um, and it wasn't because I was trying to to live my life for Jesus, but it was just because because of um, what what people would think, what they would say behind my back. In late 2009, I felt like something was missing from my life, and uh, this was about the time when God started calling me to follow Him. I'm really thankful that he led me to Westside because uh, when I first came to the youth group, the youth pastors um, really helped me to just feel welcome and meet new faces. Um, and up to that point, I didn't really know much about Jesus. I really felt like um, I wanted to learn more about him. I really felt um, God calling me to uh, learn more about him. Within five months of attending the uh, Westside, I um, accepted Christ and I got baptized. Um, and then things just um, really took off from there. In 2011, um, I went to the vertical retreat with the student ministry, and um, this is where I met my life group leader, Michelle Kernicke. Um, she, she's been a great part of my life. Um, I, I didn't have a mentor before, and um, she's just really helped my relationship to, to grow and blossom. Um, she's been there for me when I've um, needed questions answered or just needed encouragement. That summer, summer 2011, I went to uh, L.A. on a mission trip. It was, it was hard for me to, to go up to people and initiate a conversation about Jesus or ask people if um, they wanted to be prayed for. And um, I found that once I went up to them and I got out of my comfort zone and I took that first step of just trusting God that, that he took the rest, that he did it 
and that all I had to do, my job was that I just needed to to initiate to initiate that conversation. Um, so God really taught me that um, He's got this, and that once I take that first step of surrendering and just putting aside my selfish ways, that that He'll speak through me. And that's kind of what all in means to me that that I put put aside myself and that I look to Jesus and the interests of others. Yeah. I didn't have my act together like that at 18. Wow, I'm so grateful for the family part of Westside Family Church that gives preschoolers and children's and students a chance to find Jesus and to follow him long before they mess up their lives. Our kids are going to lead us in giving right now. And the preschoolers and elementary kids have, have created their own all-in bag, and they've been collecting their offering. Many of you parents know that. And they're going to bring it today. And while they're doing that, our students are going to join them as well. This hour will be the, the middle school here at Lenexa, students joining up at Speedway also. Here's the cool part. We're going to let you stay seated while we worship through this, because we want you to see your kids. There's no telling what's going to take place in the next couple of minutes. Let's worship together and watch our kids lead us in giving. It's about reaching a thousand new families with thousands of preschoolers, and thousands of elementary kids, and thousands of teens for Jesus. It's been a two-year process team of pastors started praying together two years ago saying, Lord, what's our next big step? It's been a year of planning. The advisory team joined us last January and we started planning out together what this would look like. In the last three months, we've done 18 events, lunches, dinners, coffees, to answer your questions. A thousand plus Westsiders attended one of those events gave us great input that has made a difference in the process. Last weekend, we voted with our voices unanimously to move forward. Today, we vote with our commitments. If you're here today and part of Westside, I invite you to find your card. Some of you have already filled yours in. Grab it. Others, they're in your bulletin. They're in the seat back here at Lenexa. At Speedway, they're in the bullets, and you can find it. I want to walk you through the process that Mary and I went through, and I've got to tell you, it's been a humorous process. My wife often pushes me spiritually. On this one, she was just plain over pushy. We began talking together, and the first line was easy to fill in because it just says, what'd you give last year? And we wrote in what we gave to Westside last year. That was easy to do. But then we started talking about how could we stretch? You know, what, what could we add? What could we sell? So there's a boat that went on the list and a vehicle that went on the list, and she didn't care about the vehicle or the boat, but I did. And then we begin saying, Jesus, how do we stretch more? What's going to be a faith, Lord? Not just something we know we can do, but what's the stretch? And I put in what I thought was a pretty awesome amount, and she looked at it and said, not enough. We wanted to make sure that the largest single item in our budget every month was what we give to Jesus. And it is. Bigger than our house payment, bigger than anything else. So we put in an amount on the card that real honestly I look at still and go, wow, really? But it's one of those things where we're saying, God, you bless. This is what we'll do. I want to encourage you. Everyone fill out a card. Everyone can put something down. We need for all of us to go all in. Everyone, do your best. Don't be afraid to write something down. If you need to change it later, that's fine. You can change it. But don't be afraid to stretch. It's an audacious amount, Mary and I have put down. But I want to do something audacious to go all in. So we're going to give you a moment to pray about this. It's 
fill it in to do what my wife has already done on ours, scratch it out and up it. She is pushy. And then I'm going to pray in a moment, and then we're going to bring our commitments together. Here's how we're going to do it at Speedway and at Lenexa. We're going to do it in sections, not movement, but tables. If you're in the floor space here in the front, there are tables in the front. If you're in the stadium seats here at Lenexa, there are tables just below you, three of them, two on the side, one in the middle. At Speedway, there are tables up in the top half and in the bottom. At Lansing, you guys always have things figured out a long time before we do. And on the internet, there's even a button you can push, believe it or not, so you can be part. I'm going to give you a moment to pray in silence, then I'm going to pray for all of us. Then I'm going to invite you to come forward to bring your commitment to reach a thousand new unchurched families for Jesus. Jesus, you're an all-in God. Thank you for that. You call me to be an all-in follower. Thank you for not letting me settle for mediocrity. Not in my worship, not in my prayer, not in my commitment to Scripture, to fellowship, and not, Lord, in how I give. We're going all in today. Speak to us. Tell us what to say what to commit to and we'll obey you. In Christ we pray. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand to your feet. We're going to worship together. Come and bring your commitments as you're ready. I want us to pray over the money the kids have brought, the cards the students and adults have brought the names that are on the prayer walls that are what it's all about. Would you join me? Jesus, this is not about a building, better video or audio. It's not about new campuses and church plants. It's not even about the kids we care for around the world, although they are precious to us. This is about reaching a thousand new families who don't know you so that their kids can one day be part of what happened today so that their teens can tell stories like we heard today. So those adults can come to know you and love you and follow you. Father, if you give us these thousand new families, we'll lead them to your son. We'll love them. And we'll give them back to you as trophies of grace. We do give you our hearts. We are all in, Lord. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let you be seated just for a moment. I want to thank you for the commitments you have made. I want to let you know that if you did not make your commitment today, this will be open for the next three weeks. We won't be pushing it or majoring on it, but it's simply available. And uh, through Easter weekend, on April 7th, the first Sunday in April, we will announce what we have committed to and where we can go and what we can do from there. You can still add a name to the prayer boards. In fact, these boards that are here in the room at Lenexa are wide open. When we get all the names up, it'll be about 1,200 names. But if you've still got a name to add of some unchurched person that you're praying for, somebody you want to see to come to know Christ, please do that. We want to encourage you 
to come back for a celebration next week. Don't miss next week's service. We're going to celebrate what Jesus is doing and has done. I'd like to end with a blessing today. Can we do that? Father, would you bless everyone that is here today, and especially these that have made a commitment to you to stretch, to go all in, to pray, to partner with you, to reach thousands for you. All through this week, Father, remind us to live and to pray all in. We love you, Jesus. Amen. God bless, church. See you next week.